Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat sejahtera boys and girls. Today for science year 2 you will learn the scientific skill for the process of classifying which is a subtopic of inquiry in science. How are you today? How are you feeling today? I hope you are fine today. I am Puan Misna Binti Paiman from SK Port Dyson, Negeri Sembilan. With me today is Encik Amrel Nurman bin Lukman, our sign inter language interpreter from SKPK Jalan Pil. Are you ready? Please make sure you have your science year 2 textbook, notebook and stationaries with you. Do you know the purpose of classifying? Alright, let's learn how to classify together. Are you ready? Let's start. The scientific skill you will learn is classifying. What does classify mean? Classify means to separate and to collect objects or phenomena which have the same characteristic. Why should you learn to classify? You should learn to classify so that it is easier to us to study the characteristic of objects or phenomena. There are several processes or steps that you must follow when you are classifying. The first step is making observation of the objects or phenomena. You should observe the objects carefully. The second step is to identify the similarities and differences in the characteristics of the objects. The third step is separating and grouping the objects according to their similarities and differences. Pupils, please look at this picture. Please observe the objects. Yes, there is a red colored square, a yellow circle and a blue triangle. There are two more squares which are blue and yellow and two other triangles in red and yellow. See, there are also two more circles in red and blue. They are very colorful, aren't they? Do you remember the process on how to classify? That's correct. First, we must look for similar objects or colors. In the picture, they are objects in three different shapes. Squares, triangles and circles. Now, did you find any other different features? Yes, the color of the objects are different. Blue, red and yellow. Now, let's select the objects according to the similar features. Did you get the answer? Let's check the answer together. We have three objects similar colors, blue, yellow and red. Therefore, we can group the objects with similar colors but with different shapes. Now, we have grouped the objects into three different groups. The first group with blue 
colored shapes. The second group with yellow colored shapes. And the third group with red colored shapes. Good job, boys and girls. Next, let's look for other similar features that we can group the objects into. Let's take a look at your answer. We have three objects with similar shapes. Square, circle and triangle. Therefore, we can group the objects with similar shapes but with different colors. Now, we can group the objects into three different groups according to their shapes. Square, circle and triangle. Great! You have successfully classified the objects. Congratulations! You classify the objects according to similar colors but different shapes. Then you classify the objects according to similar shapes but different colors. Congratulations boys and girls. First, you are able to state the characteristic of an object or phenomena. Second, you can describe the characteristic of an object or phenomenon by stating the similarities and differences. Now, let's move on to another classifying activity. How do we classify objects or phenomena with more similarities and differences in their features? Please look at the next picture. Can you list the animals in the picture? Please write the names of the animals in a piece of paper. Where do animals live? They live together on the farm. There are many animals on the farm. Can you identify the least, the similar characteristic of these animals? What do you think about differences in the characteristic of these animals? Make a list of characteristic of these animals on a piece of paper. Can you read question number one? The question is, what are the animals on the livestock farm? The animals in the picture are cows, goats, chickens, ducks, rabbits and birds on the farm. Yes, the answer is correct. Can you read question number two? The question is, what are the similarities and differences in characteristic of the animals? You can identify the similarities and differences in their features such as number one, how the animals reproduce. Number two, is the number of legs the animals have. Number three, do the animals have wings? And number four, do the animals have horns? Now, you can classify these animals according 
to the features you have list. Let's check the answers together. First, let's classify animals on the farm according to the similar ways of reproduction. Ducks, chickens and birds have a similar way to reproduce. They lay eggs. Cows, goats and rabbits are different from ducks, chickens and birds because they gave birth. The similarity among all these animals is that they all live on land. Next, let's classify animals on the farm according to the number of legs they have. Ducks, chickens and birds have two legs. They are similar in the number of legs that they have. Cows, goats and rabbits have four legs. They are similar in the number of legs that they have. Congratulations, boys and girls. Now, you are able to separate and group objects or phenomena according to their similarities and differences. Well done. Some animals can be classified as those with wings and those without wings. Ducks, chickens and birds are animals with wings. They have a similar characteristics. Cows, goats and rabbits do not have wings. This is a different characteristic from ducks, chickens and birds. Boys and girls, you are now able to separate and group objects or phenomena by stating their similarities and differences. Very good. Let's classify these animals as those with big and those without big. Ducks, chickens and birds are animals that have big. They are classified as having a similar characteristic. Cows, goats and rabbits are classified as different from ducks, chickens and birds because they are animals do not have beaks. Boys and girls, you are now able to separate and group objects or phenomena by stating their similarities and differences. Excellent! We have completed classifying animals by separating and grouping them according to their similarities and differences. The features or characteristics you use to classify them are how they reproduce, the number of legs they have, whether they have wings or do not have wings, and whether they have beaks or do not have beaks. Pupils, can you classify animals on the farm according to other features? Yes, we can identify other features such as Number one, animals that have horns and do not have horns. 
Number two, animals that have long ears and do not have long ears. Let's look at the next picture. Let's classify this animal as animals that have horns and animals that do not have horns. A similar feature between dogs, chickens, birds and rabbits is that they are animals without horns. Cows, goats are classified differently because they have a different characteristic that is they are animals with horns. Boys and girls, you are now able to separate and group objects or phenomena by stating their similarities and differences. You are doing great. Let's classify these animals as animals that have long ears and animals that do not have long ears. Rabbits and goats have a similar feature. That is they are animals with long ears. Cows, ducks, chickens and birds are classified differently because they have a different characteristic. They do not have long ears. Boys and girls, you are now able to separate and group objects or phenomena according to their similarities and differences by stating the features used. Congratulations! Boys and girls, you have just learned all the methods of classifying animals or objects. Congratulations on your success. You are now able to do three more things. First, you are able to separate and group objects or phenomena according to their similarities and differences. Next, you are able to separate and group objects or phenomena by stating their similarities and differences. Also, you are able to group objects or phenomena according to their similarities and differences to the final stage by stating the features used. This is an enrichment activity. Let's collect other objects and classify them in other ways. The objects are magnet bar, marble, ping pong ball, paper clip, wooden pencil, paper, metal spoon, plastic spoon, nail, eraser, and handkerchief. After you have collected the objects, write your observation in a table. Using the table, you can list the objects according to their similar and different features. This way, you can classify objects easily. Objects or phenomena can also be classified by using charts. Charts can be used to separate and 
grow features. Boys and girls, let's look at what you have learned today. First, you learn to make observations to separate and group objects with similar features. Second, you learn to identify the similarities and differences of the characteristic of objects in order for them to be classified in their groups. Third, you learn to collect and group objects using their similar and different features. Fourth, you learn to group objects using other features. Finally, you learn to group objects using other methods to classify. After this lesson, I am sure you are now able to apply the scientific skill for classifying. I hope you enjoy this lesson today. Thank you, boys and girls. See you next time. Goodbye.